What you're hearing is a distortion based on a system of lasers. In this video, we'll dive into how it works and explore some of its pros and cons. This is a Michelson-Morley interferometer. Its functionality is completely contingent on the wave-like nature of light. It works by splitting a laser with a half-silvered mirror and letting the two arms travel controlled distances. Then, after recombining the beams, we can measure the interference using a photo detector. If we plug the photo detector into a speaker system directly, we get an interesting sound. To understand what's happening here, we first need to know a little bit about waves. Let's look at two types of interference, constructive and destructive. Interference is completely constructive when two identical waves align and the waveform is consequently amplified. Here the red and the green waves represent the two identical beams that were split from the same laser. The blue line represents the resulting wave from the red-green combination. The green wave is hiding behind the red right now because both waves have the same phase. If we phase shift one of these waves 180 degrees, the interference would then be completely destructive. Notice each peak aligns with an equal but opposite trough and the resulting wave is zero at all points. The laser beams completely cancel each other out and the photo detector measures no light. If we wanted completely constructive interference between the two arms of our laser, we would only need to ensure they travel the same distance before recombining. Here, the photo detector measures the wave combination as light. To change the nature of interference, we can alter the path length one beam travels by moving its mirror. Now I've moved the second mirror back a quarter wavelength, and you'll notice the laser returns shifted 180 degrees. Though it may look like the light in this region will cancel out before it reaches the beam splitter, it's important to note that the waves are traveling in opposite directions here. That means, that the interference may be destructive sometimes, the waves will continue to move and our laser makes it back from mirror 2. The interference is now destructive at the photo detector and it sees no light. If we move the mirror at a constant speed along the beam's axis, the phase will continue to shift and the interference will oscillate between constructive and destructive. The photo detector sees this as a flashing light, which converts into an oscillating voltage, which we can play out of a speaker. The frequency of this oscillation would depend on the wavelength of the laser and the speed of the mirror. The faster the mirror goes, the higher the frequency. Imagine we attach one of our mirrors to a speaker so that it vibrates along the beam's axis. We'll call this our mirrored speaker. In this graphic, the blue line represents the mirrored speaker, and the sine wave represents the signal we're playing through it. Notice the velocity of the mirror is proportional to the slope of the waveform at any given time. This means our mirror's velocity is zero at the peaks and troughs and maximized at the inflection points. The overtones our photo detector sees are dependent on this interaction. Increasing the frequency of our mirrored speaker will not change the presence of overtones, but it will increase their frequency. Here we see the frequencies present in a processed sine wave at 300 Hz, and here is a 600 Hz sine wave played at the same amplitude. If we do want to increase the presence of our overtones, all we have to do is increase the amplitude of our mirrored speaker. Here we see the frequencies in the process signal when the amplitude of our sine wave was set to 1 micrometer. Now we see the overtones from the same frequency signal being played with an amplitude of 3 micrometers. This amplitude overtone relationship is what makes our system responsive to dynamics. The harder we push the mirrored speaker, the more distorted our signal will become. Musicians love when a sound processor can respond to expressive playing, so let's hook up a bass guitar to our mirrored speaker and see how it sounds. The good news is, it sounds exactly how everyone thought a laser should. The bad news is, it's extremely sensitive. In this clip, you can even hear talking the interferometer picked up like a microphone, along with a lot of static. Another piece of bad news is that the process signal comes out just about as compressed as it possibly could be. This is not a big deal though. You can reintroduce the volume dynamics using the volume data of the original waveform. One last piece of bad news. The fundamental frequency tends to get lost in the overtones. You can see the fundamental frequency here highlighted in yellow. Luckily, we can also add that back in. If I reintroduce the volume dynamics and the fundamental frequency, and maybe turn down the amplitude of the mirrored speaker a bit, I get a much more mix-friendly sound.
If you'd like to hear a more fleshed out use of the interferometer, you can find it on Planet. But if you hold on, hold on, I'll be holding on to you. But if you find your new reality, never can. Just thinking about me